and where we're going, tell you a little bit about what we did uh, since we last met uh, on Thursday, a little bit around enforcement, and then walk you through uh, some of the trend lines uh, before they become headlines in the state of California. Let me update you briefly on the number of counties in the state of California that we're monitoring. Uh, counties that have been on a list uh, for three plus days, a monitoring list that we put out a number of weeks ago. And when I last left you on Thursday, there were 19 counties on that list. Today, we have 23 counties. Uh, and you uh, see up there, the newly added six counties, 19 plus six doesn't equal 23. Well, you have counties that are coming on and counties that are coming off. For example, Contra Costa was on, off now, back on. Santa Clara was on last week, no longer on. So we have, in total, new updated monitoring list. Uh, those six counties, Calusa, Madera, Marin, Merced, Monterey, and San Diego that were added uh, to our monitoring list. This is a list uh, we use for technical assistance uh, to engage their local health officers or local elected officials working within uh, the county uh, to address criterion that they attested to, that they put forward uh, as a county uh, that needs to be monitored uh, and needs support uh, if we are no longer aligned in terms of our initial expectations. One of the most important things we can do in addition to technical assistance on that monitoring list uh, is to do more to focus on enforcement. Now, we walked through uh, the beginning uh, of our enforcement efforts that we were anticipating uh, implementing this weekend. I want to update you on what we did do this weekend, but I want to remind you that our enforcement has been prioritized on parts of the state uh, where we have known violators, where we have high-risk workplaces, or we have industries uh, that you know should be operating uh, at a scale. You know, Think of restaurants and bars uh, in an appropriate and safe manner. And so that was the criteria to which we advanced our updated efforts on enforcement, our more targeted enforcement efforts with these teams that we have assembled, these cross-pollinization of state agencies uh, that uh, sent out teams in six key regions in the state of California over the weekend. Our focus, again, is to remind people that we have put forward guidelines in this state. So much of the focus, I've said, in the past has been around when to reopen our economy, but not how to more safely uh, reopen sectors in our economy. And so we really need to get back to a focus uh, on how to safely reopen our economy. Well, what are the mitigations that need to be in place? What are the expectations that we set forth as it relates to wearing masks, both from a staff perspective and a patron perspective? What are the physical distancing criteria that we have attested to and put into place pursuant to those state guidelines? Uh, what's the signage uh, that has been put up so it's uh, visible uh, and people have access to it? Physical distancing criteria and the like. And so we really focused in on workplace safety guidelines. Again, the enforcement is not just about being punitive. It's also about educating people, allowing people to make modifications, uh, but moreover, uh, to address the bad actors, the folks that are simply just disregarding uh, these orders and to hold them to some account as well. But this is the primary focus of the enforcement education along the criteria that we put out and the guidelines uh, and the modifications that we've made, again, focusing on how to safely reopen sectors of our economy. Over the last few days, uh, we significantly increased uh, our enforcement in these three critical areas. We had close to 6,000 in-person visits to bars and restaurants just from the Department of Alcohol Beverage Control. So ABC visited just shy of 6,000 establishments uh, over a few-day period. You'll see uh, over 440,000 uh, individual contacts that were made, phone calls, visits, emails, and the like through OSHA 
and our Department of Industrial Relations. Uh, and I mentioned uh, on Thursday um, the Board of Barbering and Cosmetology. We have to focus, obviously, uh, on concerns uh, in salons and the like. And so we directed, based upon input we were getting uh, from county health officials, again, targeting uh, these counties that are on the watch list, we targeted licensees uh, that we had either received complaints about or uh, had information uh, that was concerning that we needed to get clarified. So significant improvement and increase in enforcement over the weekend. Uh, most of it, again, from an educational paradigm, though there was uh, plenty of citations. Local law enforcement, uh, we are requesting more information about local enforcement on masks. Uh, requirements and the like, but as you saw from West Hollywood, Santa Monica, and others, notably, uh, we're stepping up their enforcement using local law enforcement uh, to either educate, uh, but also to promote uh, physically distancing and or, excuse me, wearing face coverings. Uh, and those were tiered, meaning first enforcement action may have been $100, up to three, in some cases, uh, $500. As you know, many of these can go as high as $1,000. Uh, on enforcement. So I encourage people, again, we're not going out there with a, a punitive frame, but we are going out with the resolve that this moment needs uh, to make sure people are protecting themselves and protecting others to mitigate the spread of this virus.